Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. It's time for an SSD roundup. Yeah, buddy. Otherwise known as we just test a bunch of SSDs at once. But this time all the SSDs are from the same family, the same line. Essentially what we're doing now is kind of wrapping a bow on Samsung 850 Pro performance. Yes, so we initially reviewed the 850 Pro 512 gig model. Yep, one of these. Yep, one of those. One of those four mm -hmm. that are sitting there. And uh, since then we have pounded Samsung and gotten the other capacities in. Okay. And ran the full suite on all of them. So and, we've got uh, numbers from 128, 256, 512, and one terabyte. Yep. Right. And uh, for comparison's sake, for this review, I threw in uh, three, cap three capacities of Marvell and three capacities of Silicon Motion. Okay. So basically like the 512, the 256, and the 128. Right. So, so the, the 850 Pro, as a quick refresher, is kind of the flagship part from Samsung now, right? Yep. It is, uh, it's, it's also their most expensive kind of consumer SSD. Yep. Right now. Uh, but it also, in the testing we did with the 512, had very impressive performance. Yes. As well. So what we're curious about is, as we have seen with other SSDs and some, let's say, lower cost SSDs, mm -hmm. different capacities have performed differently yep. and sometimes have fallen off very quickly. So Usually the right speeds. Yes. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, most yeah. of the time, the writes are the arguably the, the thing that takes flash memory the longest time to do. Um, and if you have fewer dies to distribute those writes across, because yeah. you know, an SSD could tell one flash die to start writing and then mm -hmm. go off and you know, tell another one. Mm -hmm. can, you can kind of parallelize that thing, that process. Um, so those SSDs that we've kind of griped about had either 128 gigabit die, which was actually the worst offender, mm -hmm. right? Because that's, uh, is that work I tell you? Uh, 16 gigabytes. Right. Right? So 16 gigabytes on one flash die. So that doesn't, you know, if you have only 128 gigabyte SSD, that's not a whole lot of dies to distribute the writes among, right? Um, and then uh, Crucial tried to fix that a little bit with uh, 64 gigabit dies, right? They were right. Using so dies you're doubling the count of dies on, on inside that SSD mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. giving them more chips to address. Yep. And the page size that you write is the same. It's just that there's less capacity gotcha. and more parallel dies. To, so what to did do Samsung write. do with the 850 Pro that's different than that? Um, they're kind of in the middle. Uh, it's an 86 gigabit, gigabit uh, die. Six. Okay. It's not an even increment of anything. No. Um, <laughs> it's the 32 layer VNAND. Right, the 24-layer VNAND that came out previously to that, which was not a consumer part really, sure. it was an enterprise and enterprise parts. Uh, but the 24-layer was 128 gigabits, so they kind of followed that convention initially. But for some reason, they just kind of threw that out and said uh, 86. Okay. Right. Sure. Um, and you would kind of think, just based on the capacity per die, and what the other kinds of dies do you would think, all right, well, this might be kind of in the middle as far as how the write speeds taper off as you get to the smaller mm -hmm. capacities. Totally not the case, hmm. like, at all. Okay. Um, so to give you a comparison, uh, if you look at um, M550s, their write speeds, uh, remember the M550 was a, a better version of the MX100 as right. far as you know, using the better mm -hmm. die combo, right? Um, the write speeds don't taper off until you get all the way down to 128 um, gig model. And when that happens, you lose about almost 100 meg per second speed off of like top speed. Right? Okay. So you're like, you know, 450 down to like 350. All right. Right, on your write speeds. Um, the uh, silicon motion write speeds taper off the almost the exact same way that the MX100 write speeds do. And that is, you got like over 400, and then for, uh, that's for like a one terabyte and a half a terabyte, and then 256 gig drops down to about 300 meg per second. You're right. So it's kind of a big chunk there. And then 128 gig, it's 150 meg per second. Another half. It's again. almost a neat halving yeah. because you yeah. have the number of dies, right? Uh, these guys, all the way down to the smallest capacity, mm -hmm. 128 gig. Yep. This uh, one. 450 meg per second. So is there a drop? It's just a. It's not even a drop. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. That, so I'm, I'm using HD Tech as that example, and HD Tech kind of does small, smaller writes. Okay. Um, in, in sequence, so it's, it's a little bit harder on an SSD. Not, you won't necessarily get the max full speed right. out of it, right? But it really doesn't care. It seems to not even matter. Um, how, how does it do that? How does it do that? Yeah. Because VNAND is a way faster at writes. Oh, uh, so it doesn't NAND. need as many die necessarily to Correct. get across it. Okay. Because in order to do those writes, uh, hmm. planar NAND, just the stuff that's flat, right? Um, you end up with this thing called like uh, intercell interference. Basically, you're you're trying to write 
a page to the flash, and as you're doing those writes, the electrons that are going through one flash cell, mm -hmm. they're very close to the adjacent flash cell. They have no choice but to pack them in as tightly as they can, and they're right. also very small cells, right? So you actually kind of get some crosstalk between them as the writes are going on, maybe. Okay. And because of that, they can't just go in one in one like instance, just instantly get the voltages all to where they need to be. They have to like kind of nudge it a little bit and then check it. Nudge it a little so more. So that's what that's what's slowing it. things down. And that slows okay. things down. Okay. And with the way that this flash is laid out, it's they still have to do that to some extent, but nowhere near as many times. Right. In order to get those volts, so that allows the 128 gig model to have the same write performance essentially as the one terabyte model. Yes, even, even though even this is still using fewer die. Yeah, it is. That is one or one eighth the number of dies. As oh, the really? Terabyte yeah. It's, yeah. They, okay. They, 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 I can tell yeah. they weigh a little yeah. bit different. Yeah. Um, and you, you, so you see, um, you do see some other slight differences in performance though when you drop all the way down to the 128 gig yep. model, and it really is mostly it's only the 128 gig. So pretty much 256, 512, 1 terabyte, they're all, almost every metric is... What are those little changes here on the 128? So the little changes are like your, um, when you look at our iom iometer tests, uh, when you're doing random workloads to it, and you're scaling up really high Q depths, things like that, just the 128 gig will kind of like flatten out a little sooner. Okay. Or it'll just yeah. sit a little bit lower, but we're not talking huge difference. As a matter of fact, uh, what's really funny is the 128 here, uh, I have the 512 gig models, which are basically the best performers of those two other controllers, mm -hmm. and this guy is still higher in all those ah, graphs gotcha. than the, you know, arguably the fastest model of the other two controllers. Hmm. So, yeah. Still an impressive part then. Yeah. And we're the, getting and we were impressed when we first did the review. And when we only had one capacity, right? So yeah, and, and I feared then, I was like, well, we're testing half a terabyte. Right. You know, you never know, 128 gig, what's going to happen. But yeah, that's that's really impressive. So, w has anything else changed in the market since our initial 850 Pro review? Have these prices come down dramatically, or are they still kind of close to the same? A little bit. I mean, we saw them, what, the other night for like 60 cents a gig or so? For the 850 Pros? I think so. Yeah. Um, they came looks they like, the t like the 256 is selling for 189 today. Yeah, that's that's, kind of, that's, that's still to 70, that I think. still seems a little bit. We saw a deal. A I think like, there was a deal last night. It was like when we were recording the podcast. One terabyte, six fifty nine, five yeah. twelve, um, three ninety nine. So they're still riding. That's, that sounds like of... the better deal, <clears throat> the five twelve one. <clears throat> Yeah. And 128 gigs at 120 bucks. And they really haven't changed much since they launched. Yeah. Like they, they, they pretty much like launched they at 70 cents a gig, yep. I believe. And they've been just kind of staying there. But they don't have a reason to, to not stay there because, like, that. They haven't had a, a, a super high, high competition right. part, right? Right. Well, I mean, would you consider this series of SSDs the. Like the best SSD you can buy, like a co best consumer SSD. Best consumer, I you would know, consider. Take them. PCI Express out of it, take like. NVMe out of it for now, all that stuff. If you're buying, yeah. if you're looking for a SATA SSD to hook up for your system, this this yeah. would probably be your best option. I mean, these even outperform the, the 730 series from Intel in, in many tests, hmm. like Incredible. almost all of the tests. And that's you know that's an overclocked enterprise grade controller from Intel. Right. Like that's their best product, basically. Okay. It's an overclocked version of their best product. Yeah. Right? And these can still run circles around them, and it's really because of the flash. Like they didn't. No issues with performance degradation. No, not on the Pro. Okay. You're not going to see that right. issue, aside from the fact that it is supposedly fixed with that firmware update. Correct. And, you know, we shouldn't see that anymore, hopefully. Um, I, just, I know that that question will come up in the it comments. Will, it will come so, up, yes. You know. uh, that, that issue does not affect any of the Pro Series SSDs at all anyway, because those are MLC. They're not TLC. Gotcha. Totally different kind of flash. Okay. All right. Uh, well, guys, he's got uh, a full review. If you want to see all the benchmarks and actually see how each of these drives compare to those competitive parts, go to PCPar.com. We'll have the link in the description below as well, yep. and some links for if you decide that this is the SSD that uh, you actually want to purchase for your own system. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. See you.